Hello, this is Jeffrey Kirk. Several years ago, I hosted a series of interviews called the Web Genius Summit. This is one of those interviews. Please note that any links provided in this recording are likely no longer useful as intended. Products mentioned may or may not be available, but lessons discussed in this video still apply. With that, I hope you enjoy this abridged episode of the Web Genius Summit. I've really been looking forward to today's call. We're going to be talking to Anne Convery. Anne is an international speaker, seminar leader, trainer, and author who has worked with top professionals in the fields of politics, medicine, law, business, health, and beauty. For 18 years, she has prepared clients for CNN, 60 Minutes, The New York Times, Time Magazine, The Los Angeles Times, Vogue, People, Self, and numerous other media outlets. Anne has delivered over 125 speeches for corporate and private groups in California, New York, Chicago, Mexico City, Barcelona, and Madrid. She works privately with clients to build powerful, unforgettable speeches for a wide variety of occasions. Anne has guest lectured at UCLA Extension and the USC Marshall School of Business, as well as the Learning Annex in LA and New York. Anne has been interviewed in the Los Angeles Times, Elle, Cosmopolitan, ABC TV, Women's Day, First for Women, Entrepreneur, Presentations Magazine, and many other media. She has written several columns for the LA Business Journal. Anne has enabled her clients to generate hundreds of thousands of dollars within weeks with her popular program, Speak Your Business in 30 Seconds or Less. She offers private training and seminars on creating the perfect speech, public relations, and attracting more clients in, you guessed it, 30 seconds or less. With Anne on the call, you're going to discover how to speak directly to the primitive brain. This is the one that triggers every buying decision your visitors make and drives results on your website and in social media. By the end of the call, we're going to uncover the biggest mistake that people make with the words on their website, so be sure to hang around for that. Anne, is there anything else you want to add to that? Uh, no, I don't think so. Right. You did a lot let's, of, let's a lot of name dropping. You did a lot of name dropping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know... Uh, for the listeners, you know that I've led each session off with a quote of one kind or another, but they've all been pretty serious so far. Today I'm pulling out one of my favorite movie lines, and this is a quote from Star Trek Generations. It begins with Captain Kirk saying, I take it the odds are against us and the situation is grim. And then Captain Picard <laughs> replies, you could say that. And then Captain Kirk says, sounds like fun. Well, I pulled this out because it actually is going to apply quite well to our conversation today. You know, whatever you do, your business is one of millions. You come up in millions of search results, you engage social media, and your tweet competes for a split second with many other tweets on the same page. And then, if somebody actually makes it to your website, they're making a judgment within milliseconds, and you've got less than five seconds to either reinforce their positive impression or turn around a negative one. And then even if you're out in person meeting someone at like a networking event, they're probably distracted, more interested in promoting themselves than learning anything about anyone else. So yes, if you're in business, the odds are against you, the situation is grim, <laughs> and it does sound like fun. So today our discussion is going to revolve around improving those odds in your favor. So let's dig in. And Super. we've got a lot to cover, and we've got mm -hmm. now less than an hour to do it. Yeah. So um, first off, I'm really curious how you started teaching people about attracting more clients in 30 seconds or less, and what's the purpose of doing that anyway? Okay. I started out teaching it because I was a media trainer, and that meant that I had to take people's life stories and squash them into two 17-second sound bites. Hmm. And this was fascinating. I did this for a long time, about 18 years, and I prepared people for everything, CNN, you know, the New York Times, everything. And I learned, I learned how to listen for what the producers and editors were listening for, which is what their audiences were listening for. And I learned the words and the phrases and the sound bites that people, that would, that would make it on camera and that would not be cut. And in doing so, I didn't realize that I was really learning a method of delivering a very fast, potent, powerful message that would break through the, you know, the media or the TV screen to the audience and how powerful this would be in business. And so I actually, it was, it was by accident. Somebody asked me, what do you do? And I said, I'm a media trainer. And they went, what? <laughs> and, <laughs> and I got the same glazed eyeball response everybody else gets. And I thought, well, this isn't working. And the next time I said, I teach people to speak their business in 30 seconds or less. And this woman said, oh, can I have your card? <laughs> oh, wow. So it was actually an accident. And I applied 
the media training techniques to business, which I don't think anybody's ever done, and they work they work brilliantly. I mean, mm-hmm. it's been it's been an amazing ride. Very good. Well, I have to admit that I really enjoy studying human psychology. Mm-hmm. You know what makes people do what they do. And one of your areas of expertise is on what you call the old brain. Yeah. And I think in the intro we call it the primitive brain. Um, what, what do you mean by that anyway? Well, I, I am taking this with permission from the book Neuromarketing by Patrick Lenvoise and Christopher Morin. It is a brilliant book, and I love it. And what people don't really know is they, they, everyone knows that you, I don't know, you sell on logic but you buy on emotion, mm-hmm. and that's just about that's just about what we know. And the truth is there are three brains. And the second brain, the first brain is irrational brain. It thinks. Second brain feels. And the third brain, the old brain, which is 450,000 years old, it's our limbic system, decides. This is the brain that actually triggers all the decisions, not the emotional brain. The, what, it, what the old brain is, I can go into the, the six rules of the old brain, but if you don't talk to this brain in its language, you are actually really wasting your marketing dollars and time huh. because it's the only brain that triggers the, the decision to move forward, take an action, take your card, buy, whatever. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of interesting. You mentioned there yeah. are six rules? Yeah, yeah. What are those? Um, well, the first one is it's completely self-centered. As an aside, the reason I like this research is because I read this book and thought, my God, I've been teaching this for five years, and I didn't have the research, and here's the research. Mm-hmm. It's completely self-centered. Every and what I teach is every single message you deliver should be delivered in, as, a, as a what's in it for them. The 100, 100% of your message should focus on, on what's in it for them. Because, if, for example, the old brain is the part of you that hears about a car accident and instantly thinks, thank God it wasn't me, mm-hmm. you know, before you think, oh, those poor people. So 100% about me. Number two, it likes contrast. It's very simple. It's an, I call it the lizard brain. It likes before, after, uh, fast, slow. <laughs> Do you know what uh-huh. I mean? Risky okay. states. If you say we are, if you say if you use neutral language, we are one of the leading providers. That does actually does not get through. It doesn't hear that. Hmm. So you have to be the only. It, you have to you have to provide contrast, or it will not actually wake up <laughs> and pay attention. And the third is tangible input. And again, I'm repeating these six rules with permission from neuromarketing. Okay. But this means that. A lot of people say we offer flexible solutions, integrated approach, we offer scalable architecture, and all that does is just breed effort and skepticism. You want to use what I call street language or pillow talk. You know, I don't turn around to my husband in the morning and say, gosh, I'm really looking for an integrated approach and a, fle- and a flexible solution. To <laughs> you know, I mean, I don't, sure, right, right? right? I don't. I turn around and go, I want to make more money. You know, and this is what the old brain hears, more money, unbreakable, 24-7 turnaround. And this is this is really... Uh, important because do you want people to think or do you want them to act? Big difference. Mm-hmm. If you want them to think, use neutral abstract language. If you want them to act, use street language, use pillow talk. Sure. And uh, the fourth is the beginning and the end. And the home brain, just like a kid, loves beginning and, and, and ends ha- and has a very short attention span. And the problem with this is that it skips the middle. <laughs> so okay. what I teach people to do is don't have a middle. In other words, if you, it's a very specific technique, but if you are talking or delivering messages, and it, this, is, this applies to copy uh, as well. And this, you know, when you have two or three sentences and it's very scannable copy, don't have a place where the old brain can go on idle because it will go on idle instantly. Hmm. It will pick up the idea and think, I've got that, and then go on idle and then come back. Well, hopefully, you don't know mm-hmm. if it's going to come back or not. And one of the things, again, that's in my system is that I teach people to arouse tremendous anticipation because anticipation actually creates dopamine, which is interesting. If you can keep people in a state of anticipation, you will release a lot of dopamine, and they will feel better, and they will keep coming after you. My system is kind of a system of attraction. How do you get people to come after you? And the fifth rule is visual stimuli, and this just means word pictures because we process in, you know, we think in pictures. Most of us. And I'm quoting from the book here. This means that the, your old brain is, processes information extraordinarily fast and is dangerously hasty. So you can't rely on your message getting through via the neocortex, the thinking brain, the thinker. You can't logically prove something to people. You can't rely on your message really getting through to that buying trigger. Instead of which, I ask people to use word pictures. Instead of my client was experiencing financial issues, you know, Betty was banging her head against the wall. So you're tapping into a 10,000-year-old processing bias when you use word pictures. 
And the last is emotion. And the old brain is triggered by emotion and only emotion. And when we have emotions, we're flooded with hormones. Uh, the synaptic connections between the neurons are faster and stronger, and we remember three times as long. This is why Alzheimer's patients mm. can remember songs. And so ignoring emotions is really not an option. And what, uh, you know, what I work with is I believe you can, it's very possible to raise an emotion. I don't mean, you know, melodrama, but <laughs> to raise a feeling, sensation in someone in 30 seconds. And that, that means that your message is literally going into a different part of the brain and you will be remembered and you will be thought of far longer, mm-hmm. particularly, particularly if you leave them hanging, if you, if, you don't fulfill their, if you don't completely satisfy their need for information. Interesting. Well, you know, yeah. <laughs> what this reminds me of, I, and I didn't intend to be going back to an, yeah. another Star Trek reference here, yeah. but, <laughs> you know, you, you get outside and you're, uh, you're meeting with people and you come across those Spock-like characters that show no emotion at all. <laughs> yes. And, you, you know, and, and you want them to be your buyer. Yes. Does this somehow apply to that, too? <laughs> well, um, there are four types of people, and... I would categorize the Spock people as the rationals, which okay. means that they are emotionally cool. They're not dominant. They're not expressive. They're not connective. They are, um, they are emotionally cool. They like facts. They like research. And you have to kind of tweak your language a little bit to appeal to them if that is your target audience. Mm-hmm. But they still have the same 450,000-year-old brain. They still buy on emotion, whether they know it or not. They just need a great deal of research and facts to back it up. So as you are giving them the information that they need, Um, and you're trying to make an emotional connection, I would allow them to make the emotional connection. My thing is that you deliver your results, your dollarized, your quantified results to people, Mm -hmm. and that's the message that arouses the emotion in the person. Let let the other person have the feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, Anxiety, gosh, I don't have that. Wow, that's impressive. Boy, I wonder if they could do that for me. (laughs) You know know what I mean? Let them feel that. Uh And they may not show you because they're (laughs) poker-faced, but they'll be feeling it. So is this, I guess, trying to draw them into a, a state of kind of pursuing your message rather yes. than the other way around? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Because um, what I ask people to do is never use, never use you. This is what I can do for you. It's very salesy. Uh-huh. But rather use a hook. Um, okay. For example, you know, what do you do? Well, for, you know, a guy came to me and he said, Ann, I'm in insurance and I can't tell people. He said, I clear the room as soon as I say it. <laughs> You know, Woody Allen's idea of hell was being in a, caught in an elevator with an insurance salesman. Sure. And so he ended up saying, and sometimes he, he, people said, what do you do? And for fun, at casual situations, he would say, I find buried treasure. Hmm. And the problem is that we label people so instantly mm-hmm. that it's hard to, to get rid of those labels. But what he would say was normally, uh, you know, people said, what do you do? And he would say, I, uh, typically I find between ten and 30,000 my clients didn't know they had in 60, sec- 60 minutes or less. Now, the interesting thing is that he didn't mention the word insurance. Right. And you can't label him. And the idea is that that's a hook. And okay. your, immediate, your immediate thought is, if he can do that for somebody else, could he do that for me? Is that true? And he's talking about money, love, or health, which is one of the three deepest needs we have. And it is the idea of dollarizing your, your, your message is to make it as potent and seductive and tangible as possible Mm -hmm. to the other person so that one of my clients in germany wrote to me and he said i can't believe the effect of dollarizing it's so powerful they don't even want to know what i do they just want to know can i do it for them Hmm. and yeah so you're right it's a question of drawing people towards you by inference if they can do that for other people can they do that for me okay cool um i want to get back to dollarizing a little later sure yeah right now uh, a thought you know bringing it back to the web yeah you know, most often on websites, mm-hmm. I, I think people have a hard time describing their product or service in a meaningful way, and they can be downright boring, mm-hmm. um, begging for a click back to Google. You know, yeah, you arrive yeah. there, and it's like, yeah. whoa, this isn't what I want, click, and, yeah. you know, and they're done. Your chance ends. Or even, like you're mentioning, the, the example of uh, meeting an insurance person in an elevator, you're, you're talking to someone, and someone asks you about your products or services or even that question, what do you do, and... What I've seen a lot is that the answers that come back are one of two extremes, either completely fumbled, Mm -hmm. uh, like it caught them off guard, Mm -hmm. or way overly rehearsed. You've said (laughs) a million times and practiced it in front of the mirror until it's dry. (laughs) So whether it's on the web 
and you're getting that first impression or you're in person getting that first impression, mm -hmm. how can we use what you've said so far to be more effective in these situations? Well, I really believe that if you do an exercise and you, you look at maybe 20 websites as fast as you possibly can, it will show you very quickly, is that website about them or is it about me? Mm -hmm. And it's the same in person. Are they talking about themselves? Are they saying, well, I'm, I'm in insurance and I sell property and casualty management and I do this, that, and the other thing? And it's, you, they get to the, the part about you at the end when you're not listening anymore. And I think it's the same thing that happens on websites. Mm -hmm. And how can you be more effective to tell them your results? What can you produce for them immediately, immediately, up front? And it's counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. most, people, most people think, well, I have to tell them what they do. Well, no, you don't because we're not really in The horrible part about it is we're not really interested. We are interested in what you can do for me. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if that person, that my client, really could produce ten to $30,000 for you, do you really care if he's an attorney or a stockbroker or an insurance salesman? Mm -hmm. and then you don't really care what he does. You just really care that, wow, he can find 30 extra thousand dollars. I didn't know I had. So what I, what I do is but teach people to lead, and it's counterintuitive. Lead with your results first and show me what is in it for me first because you need to grab my attention. You need to engage me, and you need to engage that whole brain. Otherwise, uh, no, no, nothing is really happening. Mm -hmm. no, nothing, no real emotional exchange is really happening. And the emotional exchange happens when you offer that person something that they want people does that make sense yeah yeah it makes sense people are in either one of five states they're either in apathy power apathy power power stress or stress and most of us most of us walk around in power i'm fine i'm okay i don't need anything i'm just mm -hmm. looking don't tell me i'm okay and what you want to do is to get them a little bit off base you want to have people powerful enough to make a decision and stressed out enough to, to need something and in order to do that, we raise anticipation and curiosity and don't exactly give them all the information. Keep it a slight tease because when people are completely satisfied, they are, are li more likely to forget you or three times as, as likely to forget you. Hmm. And I know that, in, that websites have to have a lot of content, but they can also deliver a tease that, that there's a lot more here. Sure. You know, you're not getting the full uh, effect. And when you meet someone in person, it's the same thing. You can deliver a, a, any kind of message in a way that raises curiosity and anticipation and gives you the idea that, wow, there's a lot more here, and, and play with it and have fun with it and the, leave the person in a state of anticipation mm -hmm. because if you leave them in anticipation, they will follow you. I ask people to have fun with this by saying, you know, people use things like um, teasers or trigger words and say, you know, like, did you know that a single cupcake can mean the difference between a yes or a no in your love life? This is a <laughs> cupcake. No, it's, it's true. You know, cupcakes used the right way in a sales promotion can create a cash surge of up to 34%, which is true. Hmm. Um, there are two words that you can change in your copy that will instantly double your sales conversions, and these are all teasers. Uh huh. And they're guaranteed to raise my anticipation and raise my dopamine when I'm listening, mm -hmm. and make me want more. Hmm. And the whole point of this is to bring me forward and pull me forward and make me want more. So you're really getting the curiosity up. You're really getting the curiosity up, yeah. The greater the curiosity, the more the emotions will begin to engage. Sure. And, wow. and not satisfying it. Mm -hmm. There's something called the Zagarnik effect, and yeah. you, which says that people remember an incomplete behavior far longer than they remember a completed one. If you completely satisfy their need for information, you will not, they'll forget you. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be remembered. And, you know, if they've met 30 people that day, <laughs> you really want to be remembered. Right. And how do we know what fulfills their sense of complete? Well, if someone says, oh, that's really interesting, thank you very much, you, you can tell mm -hmm. when you talk to someone. They'll say, well, thanks, that's really nice, and they don't ask for your card or they don't call, want to call you or they don't click. They haven't seen anything that's interesting to them. They haven't seen anything. The old brain has not been aroused. Sure. They have not been stimulated, and they haven't seen anything that really, really, that they want. Uh -huh. And... What I ask people to do is give a message. For example, I discover between 10 and 30,000 my clients didn't know they had, or a bridal consultant. I show working brides how they can save between 10 to 40,000 with a good consulting plan. Now, if you were a bride, you would really want to know. Mm -hmm. Data recovery. In 15 minutes, I can show my clients how saving money on data recovery can cover the cost of the receptionist. <laughs> do you know what I mean? 
And instead of, I create beautiful memories for happy brides. That's a, that's a completed statement. There's nowhere to go from there. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. My brain is reeling right now. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, for example, if, if a business coach says, you know, say, what do you do? And they're a business coach. And they say, I help people break through their barriers and take them to the next level. Uh-huh. I mean, those are really unhearable words. Sure. Everybody, everybody breaks through barriers. Everybody takes you to the next level. And, there's, you know, where do you go from there? What, what do you say? Oh, that's interesting. You know, what do you do? Right. <laughs> there's, no, there's nothing going on. Uh-huh. If he says, you know, every client I've worked with has increased their revenue by at least 30% in less than six months. One guy actually shot up from $4 million to $120 million in 22 months. Now, that's different. If he can do that for other people, he might be able to do that for you. Right. There's results in that. Yeah. If you say, I am a web programmer, I, my brain immediately thinks I've got one. I don't need you. Uh-huh. I am an attorney. Got one. Don't need you. Do you know what I mean? Sure, yeah. And if, you, However, if a web programmer said, what do you do? Well, I've developed uh, two ways to increase online cash flow by up to 35% in 90 days. And all of a sudden, even if you had a web programmer, this guy's talking money. He's not talking web programming. And if he can do that for somebody else, perhaps he could do that for you. It's, right. it's much more provocative. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I don't mean to make your brain real. I'm sorry. <laughs> talking too much. <laughs> well, no, it, that's not it at all. It's just there's ideas bouncing around. It's like, how can I implement this right now? I'm thinking, you know, I'm, well, I'm, in, a, I'm in an active state of learning. <laughs> oh, okay. I can show you some. We can go through it. How do you do it? What would you like to do? Yeah, go ahead and continue where, where you were. Well, for example, people, I, I ask people to stop using unhearable words, mm-hmm. and there are thousands of them. And we all have them, and they're on everybody's website and in everybody's speech. And unhearable words are simply, they're either neutral words, which do not get through to the old brain, like Mm -hmm. scalable business model, specific project requirement, budget framework, fiscally sound, fiscal fitness, human potential, break through your barriers, the life of your dreams. You know, I could go on and on, but they're unhearable. So are these things that are just, they've been said so many times that we tune them out now? Or is there some other There are two different, yeah, there are two. You're absolutely right. They've been said so many times that we tune them out. Or they are, remember that that old brain, they're not street language. I mean, do you wake up saying, I want a scalable business model? No. You know, you you wake up saying, I want a better way to, you know, to generate cash flow or something Mm -hmm. like that. Sure. So there are two. They're neutral abstract words, or they're just words that are exhausted. They've, mm-hmm. they've lost their power. And the problem is that when you use them, the, the, person's, the other person's brain takes a vacation, or they click off the site. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. Uh, you, you actually lose attention, and it's three times as hard to get attention back. And I ask people to start using one of the things is to start using trigger words. Mm-hmm. And trigger words are in Robert Cialdini's great book, Persuasion. Okay. It's a phenomenal book, mm-hmm. and it's a, it's a sales classic. It's, it's unbelievable. And he talks about them, trigger words being so powerful that his sales people used to lock up their scripts and vaults. But trigger words are words that either feel good or feel bad. And, for example, if I said, congratulations, I hear you have a new kid in the house, or congratulations, I hear you have a new baby in the home. Baby in home, whether or not you know it, have just delivered a little warm fuzzy to your unconscious. Mm. And trigger words are actually attached to emotion. So they're fabulous. Okay. And they can be good. They can be like family, income, godsend, mom, multi-million. Or they can be bad, like burnout, cash poor, contempt, crack up, bankrupt, fat, failure, stuff like that. And it doesn't really matter as long as they produce emotion. Mm-hmm. And people think, oh, well, they're, you know, they're just words. What can they do? I had someone call me from Canada briefly, and just, I'll just make this quick, and she said, I'm about to be fired. I don't know what to do. I'm, I'm a futures trader, and I can't get people to buy these hundred thousand dollar contracts. I don't know what to do. So we had everybody call her. We had her call all her, her list, and she said, "Hi, uh, I'm I'm the firm's Gold Circle Investment Advisor, and you know, gosh, I don't know why you're not on my list. You certainly qualify to be in the Gold Circle, but I've called all my Gold Circle members last week, and I've only got four positions left at a hundred thousand each. Are are you in?" And three weeks later, two weeks later, she called me up and she said, "I sold three positions at a hundred thousand." And I said, "What did it?" And she said, "Gold Circle. Everybody hmm. wanted to be in the Gold Circle." Wow. So, so it's an example of how powerful they can be. Mm-hmm. And the next thing is, please don't use the verb am, I am. As soon as you label yourself, first of all, you're advertising for your competition. You know, I am a chiropractor. I am a coach. And my brain immediately thinks of all the other coaches. And oh. I also think, I've got one. I don't need you. Mm-hmm. 
and what we, we are human beings are about pattern recognition. I am seeking to label you. I'm seeking to label people so that I so that they don't cost me money and they don't cost too much. I just want the information. I'm not, I don't really want to get involved. I'm okay. Right. You know what I mean? So don't help me. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. when you use M, you're putting a big bow on yourself and wrapping yourself up and putting yourself in a box, and I can dismiss you. And verbs, on the other hand, are the most powerful engines in the English language. People identify you with your verb. And this is so important in copy, as copywriters know. For example, you know, you might say, well, John designs, you know, Susie creates, Bill diagnoses, Stephen develops. People identify you with your verb. Okay. They've done tons of, of um, research about this. For example, Winston Churchill's blood, sweat, and tear speech had a 12.1% adjective rate. Adjectives really don't work that well. And verbs do. Hmm. And the other thing... So is 12.1, is that a high number or a That's low a number? very, very low number. Okay. They did a study on Madison Avenue of failed ads, and the ads had a 63% adjective rate. Hmm. So the idea is to get down to the verbs. And the biggest thing, the one thing that I'm on the real bug on, is please dollarize what you do. Dollarize and quantify what you do. And what that really means is you're going to translate the dollar value of what you do and put it into words your listener or your visitor can instantly comprehend. And the thing is that people don't usually do this. 95% of people who sell don't dollarize, which fascinates me. Mm -hmm. And I got that from Jeffrey Fox Hmm. in his book, How to Become a Rainmaker. It's fascinating. So how how would you actually go about doing that? Well, the, the example of, you know, I sell insurance, middle market only. We sell property, casualty, employee benefits. You know, I'm not going to bore you, but... It was, a long, it was a long message. Sure. And I discovered between ten and 30,000, my clients didn't know ahead in 60 minutes or less, is dollarizing. Okay. Um, when I was working with a coach, I said, uh, she was a systems analyst, and I said, what do you do? And she said, I'm a systems analyst. Well, that's not going to excite me. Mm-hmm. They're neutral words. They're abstract. And I said, well, what was your best success story? And she said, well, I worked with a guy last week. He was a coach, a marketing coach, and he was losing an hour a week looking for lost emails, and I got his time down to a minute a week. Now, again, that's not that interesting. You're not a marketing coach. What do you care? And I said, well, how much was the guy's time worth? And she said, 250 an hour. And I said, well, okay, in two hours, you saved this man 12500 a year. Now do you want to work with her? Now, sure. do you see her? now do you see her value? Numbers are so powerful. They're unbelievable. Mm-hmm. They're powerful for a number of reasons. We're conditioned by the media to hear numbers. Uh, if you stand at the checkout counter at, a, at a, any store, you, you know, Yesterday I read 14 things plumbers don't want you to know. Three <laughs> you know, 44 things men don't want women to know. Six ways to lose 10 pounds in four weeks. And these are, bear in mind, these are written six months ahead of time. So these editors know. And they're at the impulse section. And the magazine's covers are slathered with numbers. Mm-hmm. It's because they raise anxiety and they raise curiosity and they raise anticipation. You pick up the magazine, you flip through it, you not finish the article, and they've checked out your food, and you just throw it on the counter, and you mm-hmm. buy it. And we're conditioned by the media to hear numbers, and they, they lend credi- an amazing credibility that statistic words don't have. They also give you a range. You know, I took someone from one guy shot up from $4 million to $120 million in 22 months. There's that fabulous contrast that the old brain wants. And numbers also cause anxiety. How much do you make? How much do you weigh? How old are you? So they produce that little free song of anxiety that's really useful. Yeah. And if you can't dollarize, people say, well, I can't dollarize, I'm a spiritual coach, or I'm a DJ, or I'm mm-hmm. a musician, or I'm, you know, I yeah. can't do that. How, what, what, what do I do? What do, they do then? Well, what do they do then? Well, you can quantify, and I love this, you can quantify. Uh, I was speaking, my favorite story, to a group of DJs in Las Vegas. They said, well, we can't dollarize, we don't sell money. And, because you're always selling money, love, or health, always. And I said, well, how many people can, can you get onto a dance floor? And this guy said, 400. And I said, well, how long does it take you to do that? And he said, 20 minutes. And I said, well, how long can you keep them there? And he said, four hours. And I said, so you can get 400 people onto the dance floor in 20 minutes, and you can keep them there for four hours. Now, is that more impressive than, well, we saw good times? <laughs> right. You know, I mean, who would you rather hire? Uh-huh. <laughs> and the power of numbers is staggering. And what, what is most powerful is to deliver that sentence, what you can do, dollarized or quantified, that sentence first, and then let somebody say, how do you do that? And most people, you know, most of us do it the other way around. What do you do? Well, I'm a DJ, I'm a chiropractor, I'm a coach. 
and then they tell you how they do what they do, or they, t- or they tell you their results. And the problem is that by that time you've labeled them, you think, oh, yeah, coach, I get it, and the old brain's on snooze button. Sure. If you give the dollarized results up front, all of a sudden you're talking to a totally different brain, and you're talking in a totally different language. You're talking in their language. You're subtly saying, here's what I can do for you. Mm-hmm. And it arouses emotion and curiosity, and after you engage them and capture them and have them interested, then you can continue to raise curiosity, and then you can tell them what you do, but not all of it. And this is what you talk about when you when you mention speaking in the buyer's language? Yes, this okay. is buyer's language. Buyer's okay. language is what's in it for me. Mm-hmm. What's in it for me is, wow, if you can find that kind of money, can you do that for me? Got it. Uh, if you can put those people on the dance floor, I've got a wedding coming up, can you do that for me? And besides just in person, doing the same kind of thing on a website Absolutely. would be effective. Absolutely. So you okay. go to that uh, DJ's website, and rather than saying, you know, the leading DJ in yes. such and such a city, it's yes. coming off saying, you yes. know, we're able to put these people on the dance floor and keep them there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, that first, it's a word picture. You can mm-hmm. see it. It raises emotion. It practically waltzes right into the old brain. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It creates contrast with those numbers, 20 minutes. It's pictured, and, it's, and it raises emotion. Yeah, so, it's interesting in that, you know, you're, you're mentioning numbers, and I, I'm kind of a math guy myself, so I, I mm-hmm. like numbers, but mm-hmm. I don't think about numbers as creating emotion. So that, you know, this is, this is an interesting topic for me. Well, the interesting thing is I have a, an example, and I, I don't know if I have it here, but I'll give you two examples from memory, one of which is Joe Smith won a Pulitzer Prize, and one of his books is being made into a Hollywood movie. Okay. Now, tell me how many magazines you've read this in. Joe Smith, 37, snagged a Pulitzer before the age of 40. He's just produced three blockbusters in the last 18 months for three major studios, and he's got a 26-week series on crucial years between 1937 and 1941. Now, tell me how many times you've read something like that in a magazine. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Can you see it? If I said to you, my doctor's great, he's a fantastic surgeon, you've got to go to him. He saved my husband's life, he's wonderful. Hear all those adjectives? Uh-huh. Now, if I said to you, my doctor has performed over 5,000 operations and his success rate is 92.3%. He's invented 17 of the techniques that he uses and doctors fly in from four continents to study with him. He has a waiting list of six months. Now, who would you rather have operate on you? Yeah, well, the same guy. expertise and credibility is yeah. established, too. Yeah. Does, I mean, do you see how it produces emotion in the fact that you think, I want that. Mm-hmm. I, want, I want the top guy. I want that right. one. Right, right. Do you see what I mean? Exactly. So the numbers produce an incredible amount of emotion. Mm-hmm. Did you know that only 5% of people will retire wealthy? Now, tell me honestly if that doesn't raise a little bit of anxiety. <laughs> it's a small number. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Sure. So people don't think about this, but numbers raise emotion constantly. They're mm-hmm. fabulous for it, and we don't take advantage of that enough, either on site or in person. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, as as you're talking, I'm jotting down notes and stuff too, so I might jump around a little bit. Oh, but I'd please. like to. I've been jumping around. I'm question. sorry. <laughs> you know, one of the first things we talked about is the thought of being able to reach someone quickly. You know, in that 30 mm-hmm. seconds or less, and. Mm-hmm creating that emotional experience and we've we've gotten into that a bit what i'm kind of wondering is how important is it to really be able to do that right away is that the key to keeping yes it alive yes okay yes because if you start out with i mean I, it's so funny i'm, I'm doing a teleseries and I've, it's fabulous it's so much fun right now mm-hmm. and i'm working with people and it's as i said it's counterintuitive what i'm asking them to do is put their results up front, you know, what do you do? Well, let me give you an idea. One of my clients, Kathy, came to me with $67. Twelve months later, she was making 163000 mm-hmm. And then, then I can say, my God, what do you do? Mm-hmm. You know, I may have to repeat the question, but dear Lord, you have my attention. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Right. Now, uh-huh. If you had said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a results coach. I help women who were burned out and bored and stuck and stalled uh, recover their interest and passion for their business. Would you be, <laughs> now be honest, <laughs> which would you rather hear first? Which, would, which, would, which answer would engage you first? Well, the exciting one. Yeah, the exciting one, sure. And, and again, it's counterintuitive because mm-hmm. we, we think, well, people ask us what we do, we ha- I have to tell them. Yeah. And you really don't. Mm-hmm. You really and don't. that's what I'm picturing on with websites as well is we move from 
a brochure, a printed piece, yes. and now yes. we're trying to implement a printed piece on the internet. Mm-hmm. And you know, we know that sucks. <laughs> yeah. But how do you step it up? Well, you can step it up because now you can have so much more content, and that content can change. And mm-hmm. you know, there's all these advantages of, of having this website that just allows you to give people every piece of information they could ever want to know. Mm-hmm. And there's probably still value in having that there, but I think what you're saying is the order needs to change. Exactly. The order needs to change. And, of course, there's, you know, there's classically that all-important first pain question. Mm-hmm. Does your copywriting suck or does your copy, has your copywriting gone to sleep or whatever, whatever the, whatever the question is. Have you tried for 50 years to lose? Are you banging your head against the wall? <laughs> you know, whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> that, that first name is pain question. Yeah. Um, but that's an example I mean, because it's an emotional grabber. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, I would say keep the emotion, keep the emotion going. Don't use the home page for your brochure, for you know. Let me introduce myself because I don't care. Right. I just don't care. Yeah. Most um, likely, you're coming from Google search or yeah. a tweet or something drew you to that page. Mm-hmm. So you're you're already in it for you. Mm-hmm. Exactly. To, to discover something. Exactly. I'm already in it for me. So let the first thing that hits my eye tell me you found the right place. Mm-hmm. This is for you. And I was at a, a guru mastermind with Eben Pagan, and I watched him actually go through 70 sites at a, at a second per site. Mm. And he asked, he asked the whole audience. It was brilliant. He asked the whole audience, and he just said, just say you or me. And everybody, after about 10 websites, everybody knew mm-hmm. with one second whether that website was, was about the other person or was about us. Wow. And it, it was a dazzling display. Uh-huh. And and kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest with you. I bet. Because you could tell instantly if uh-huh. it, if it was about, you know, if I'm landing here and this is all about me, which is of course what I want. Yes, exactly. Now you also mentioned being able to tie your business into I think you said money, love money, or love health. health. Yeah. 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 How can you consistently do that? Well, the thing is that money, love or health, that old brain is again, you know, looking for what's in it for me. Mhm. And I, I throw this out because we're all looking for money, love, or health. For example, the, the web, I'm a web designer, I'm a web programmer, whatever. Who cares? Mm-hmm. Because we've all got one. I've got one. I don't need you. <laughs> I've created three ways to increase uh, online cash flow by 30% in 90 days. 90 days is always better than three months, right? All of a sudden, the guy is talking money. What do you do? I'm a mortgage broker. I, I help people find their dream homes. Well, okay, fine if you're looking for a dream home. But <clears throat> if you change that to... What do you do? I uh, teach people five secrets of wealth building and cash flow so they can leverage other people's money and hang on to more of their own. All of a sudden, again, the guy is selling money. Mm-hmm. Now, not everybody sells money. Some people sell relationships. And the reason is because the old brain is scanning. We're scanning all the time for what's in it for us, and we're scanning for more money, more love, or more health. Okay. It's just as if you had this lizard back there. <laughs> this lizard <laughs> I love that example. 450,000-year-old T-Rex back in the back of your head, and it's scanning, and it's alive and kicking, and it's listening. And, and, and we don't know this. We meet this polite person, or you know, we, people come to our sites, and our site's really pretty, and it says all the right things. And we don't take advantage, and we don't recognize this gigantic 450,000-year-old brain that only responds to six rules. For example, you know, how do you tie what you do to money, love, or health? Well, again, I'll take the hardest thing in the world. I'll take insurance, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, do you know that 92% of people who buy insurance are paying too much? It ties it to money. Okay. This one insurance policy has saved thousands of families from financial ruin. It ties it to the relationships mm-hmm. and love. Do you know that preventative care insurance help keep, keeps people healthier and saves them thousands of dollars in doctor's bills? It ties it to health. Mm-hmm. It ties it to money. When you have a simple health question, Use your hotline. It can save you hours of time at the doctor's office. Ties it to time. Because whenever I talk to organizers, they always scream that time is one of the four deepest human values. So that, you know, money, love, health, or time. Okay. But, you know, AT&T, reach out and touch someone. I mean, they're tying telephone technology to relationships. Right. CVS Pharmacy, we're open 24 hours because moms are too. You know, it's tying a drugstore to family love. But it works. Yeah, yeah. So, so interesting. You can Taking tie anything. Out. You can tie anything. But my bigger question is, what are you really selling? See, because uh, most people sell their, their benefits or their, you know what I mean? Most mm-hmm. people sell their benefits or what you get. And I'm asking you to please sell me your results, your dollarized quantified results, and, and tie them into, tell, tell me, 
tell me right up front, I'm getting money, love, or health from this, and this is what you can do and, and yeah. this, in this amount of time, and this is how long it's going to take. Sure. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Very interesting. Good deal. You know, I, I do want to give you a chance to talk about your training that you do on this subject. Do you want to take a few minutes and just tell our listeners about that? Sure. It's called You're So Brilliant. Why Don't They Buy? <laughs> 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 and it's fabulous. I love it. It's a five-week class. They are teleclasses. The next one starts May 4th, I think. And this class has produced phenomenal results. I'm really happy. I have to brag just for two minutes. One guy in Germany doubled his income for the year in 24 hours. Hmm. And he also called me the week after class two, and he said, I've just made an extra 40000 He's a sales trainer, and he said, thank you. He said, they don't, dollarizing is so powerful, they don't want to know what I do. They just want to know, can I do it for them? And that's where mm-hmm. that came from. Wow. And this has doubled lists, expanded your database, attracted five to seven more times more prospects to target markets or your website. And what it is, is I give people a podcast beforehand so that they the lesson comes beforehand and all the calls are coaching. And that's much more fun. It's much okay. more interactive. And everyone gets a personal hot seat. And we have a special class, the last class, which uh, tells people how to use this on your websites and in social media. And the outcome of the class is that people double their lists. Their business increases by 30% to 60%. There have been amazing, amazing, amazing results from it. One woman said, thank you. I I didn't believe you, and I didn't do this for five months, and I finally gave in, and I did it, and I tripled my business, Mm -hmm. so thank you. And what we do is we we completely take apart your message. What are you saying, and what's not working? And then let's make it work. And there's a forum, and everybody's very, very helpful. Everybody, We all comment on each other's messages and tweets and stuff, Mm -hmm. and it's uh, phenomenally effective. You really, I, I want people to come out of this with a useful, powerful target that is going to increase their either whatever they want, increase their list, increase their visitors, increase their site views, increase their prospects, mm-hmm. and that's what happens. So we and break down the messages and we remake them and we remodel them, and you come away with a complete like maybe five to seven different messages because it's a whole conversation and it's a marketing conversation. And I also teach people about the mindset. Remember who you're talking to. You're not talking to a person. I mean, you are, but you're talking to a 450,000-year-old brain. How can you engage that brain immediately? And we learn how to do that. And it's a lot of fun. It's wonderful fun. And it's one session a week for five weeks? It's one session a week for five weeks, yes. And there are lots of downloads and lots lots of content uh-huh. and a forum. and. Uh, but it's interactive. It's not like just you're lecturing. No. that's See, I deliver the lecture beforehand. Okay. So you listen to the lecture beforehand, and okay. every call is a coaching call. Wow, that's really cool. That's so much fun. It's so much better. And this should really, for, for any business people, it doesn't matter if there's somebody who no. can directly dollarize or, or not. No, no, <laughs> no. If you can't directly dollarize, no, you, then you can do one of three things. Everybody can quantify. Mm-hmm. I don't care who you are, you can quantify. How long does it take you to get your results? Give me a range. You know? What's the time span? How long, you know, when did you produce your results? Talk talk about how many people have you worked with? How many pounds have your clients lost? I don't care, you know. Mm -hmm. You can always quantify because numbers are so impressive and emotional and crucial. And I also teach people how to educate, which works wonders on your website, and how to tell stories. If somebody's like a jewelry maker and they really can't dollarize or quantify, then storytelling, two-sentence stories, should we get a, a whole set of like half a dozen two-sentence stories will give anecdotal evidence and raise emotion and raise curiosity. And how do you do that in stories? So there are several ways to get around. If you really can't dollarize, that's okay. It doesn't matter. You can still get a very seductive. This is seduction. <laughs> Let's face it. It's seduction. <laughs> you know what I mean? So how can you seduce and tease and arouse that response that you're looking for? What are you looking for? Do you want them to click? Do you want them to ask your card? Do you want them to call you? What are you looking for? And how do you get them to do that in the first, you know, two seconds to 30 seconds to one yeah. minute? Wow. Yeah. Is, um, you mentioned hot seats. Does that imply that there is a limited number of? No. Everybody gets a hot seat. Okay. I limit the class to 30. So we, everybody class gets, is limited to 30. Okay. Mm-hmm, and everybody gets a hot seat. Okay. Yeah, which is great fun. Wonderful. Well, that sounds like a really interesting class. So for anybody listening in, want to expand on uh, what Anne has been talking about today, I think that class would be a great way to do it. 
I, I do have a few more questions here. Please. And I'd like to tie back to the quote we had at the beginning mm -hmm. and the seemingly overwhelming odds that we face to get attention on social media and our websites, and mm -hmm. you know, especially when we have such a brief opportunity to capture the minds of those that are you know, watching the tweets or those that are arriving on the website. Mm -hmm. So I guess let's take a look at Twitter. We've, uh, on our previous call in the Web Genius Summit, we were, we were looking at Twitter. And basically there you've got 140 characters. And oh. some of those have to be reserved to be a link that mm -hmm. someone can click on. Mm -hmm. So how can I really say enough in that really short period in order to get someone to click? Well, I would really use it as a tease. We've done a study on Twitter, and we found what gets the most results are offer a special offer, offer a giveaway that's exclusive to Twitter, have a contest, ask a very provocative question, retweet other people's tweets that will get them to act in kind, which is you know standard practice. Mm -hmm. But basically a special offer or an exclusive giveaway or a contest or very provocative questions or extremely useful advice. But again, I would really emphasize, please use trigger words. Mm -hmm. Please use emotional words. And if you can possibly do it, get some numbers in there. Sure. Because do you have some examples of what might be some really good types of phrases that could get a response? Um, can you help me out with what would be a tweet? Let's refashion a tweet. Sure. Let me just pull up Twitter right now and see what's okay. going on. All right. See if we can restructure yeah. someone's. Okay. Okay, um, here we go. March Madness Gifts has launched. Entrepreneurs go here. And then there's a link to what clearly looks like an affiliate type link. Okay. March Madness Gifts has launched. Affiliates yeah. go here. Yeah, entrepreneurs go here. Entrepreneurs go here. Okay. March Madness gift. Okay. I would say prize mm -hmm. has launched. Although it looks like the URL is also marchmadnessgifts.com, so okay. they're probably trying to tie that in. That's true. I probably would have made it prize.com as possible. <laughs> because prize is something that you have to win. Prize is more of a trigger word than gift. Sure. Okay. Um, March Madness gift. Entrepreneurs click here. Yeah, entrepreneurs go here. Go here. Okay. And is that's that's 140 characters. Hmm. Yeah, it's probably pretty close. He's got a long URL. Yeah. Not much room to work. Darn. Well, if he used tiny URL, and we could possibly get March Madness prize, and he wants entrepreneurs, so the prize must have to do with money. I'm guessing. Yeah, I would think. Yeah, I would put. I would. I don't know what he's doing, but I would ask. I would love to put the word cash in there, mm -hmm. or put dollar signs in there or put something that indicates about money, because it's mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, and grab now instead of go here. Grab now is more action-oriented, it yeah. sounds like. And everybody has March Madness, so I would play with this, actually, and put, it might be fun to say, stop March Madness. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Sure. Because there are so many March Madness tweets. Uh huh. So you might say, stop March Madness. Yeah. Um, you, Chris, wouldn't, I'm, I'm really playing it with it. Stop March Madness or grab March Madness, grab your Y Y R March Madness prize now. Well, I think that's that, what I would do. That's yeah, what I, would do I mean, that's, that's given us head. an example. Yeah, that's what I would do you know, off the top of my head. The way to think through that. Yeah. So that that's good. Yeah. Is there some methodology in your mind as far as tweeting, you know, to try to achieve maximum impact or relationship build or anything like that? Yeah, I... I would very much retweet other people's tweets and build relationships. I truly believe in building relationships and tweeting on other people's, tweeting for other people and to get them to, to build respect and to build sure. a community. It's, 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 notice it, you. It really is too. about it really is about building relationships. I don't. It's not about numbers to me at all. It's about the quality of who you follow and who is following you. More is not necessarily better. Sure. And I think it needs to be targeted. And I think if you follow up on the people who are following you and can build just once or twice a week to start building a relationship about their website or about something, I think it, it builds a completely, a, a very high quality uh -huh. following. Good. We're running out of time, so okay. let's, let's move past that. Um, yeah. Let's assume for a moment that you know you, the tweet was effective, someone yeah. arrives at the website, yeah. and then there's a whole new set of variables that come in. The site makes an impression quickly, mm -hmm. you know, within those milliseconds, yeah. and then it has to reinforce the, the positive or, the, or overcome the negative. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this uh, already, so I, so I don't 
need to rehash that, but a promise I made at the beginning of this call was that we get to one particular point, and that is the biggest mistake that people make with the words on their site. And you know, we I think we've kind of danced around that too. But if you could kind of tune into that for a moment, that would be awesome. Okay, I think the biggest mistake they make with the words on their site is again the words are neutral, mm -hmm. and they they may not they may have no idea that they are neutral. So it's it's you know, using the unhearables again. Using, using the unhearables. Okay. Also using neutral language. We are one of the leading. Okay. We specialize in. Mm -hmm. So avoid uh, all that stuff. Avoid all of that stuff because because it's not being heard. Mm -hmm. You know, um, to use street language as much as possible, and you're talking. You're, of course, you're entering into the conversation in the other person's mind, and what do they want? Why have they come? What do they want? And when they come to that site, they should find the answer. To me, they should find the answer right at eye level. Mm -hmm. They should know you've come to the right place as soon as they see it. Right. So what words can you use? I would use all of them, everything everything that we use in person. I would use trigger words. I would use dollarized results. Mm -hmm. And it may amaze me and engage me before you tell me anything else. So you're pretty much saying your online presence should kind of mirror you in your offline world. Yes, yes, very much so. Wonderful. Because if you don't, it, again, it's it's counterintuitive because you want to tell people what you do and what you're about. Mm -hmm. and, and we don't care. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't care. We care about give me your results mm -hmm. and ask me, are, you know, are you, you can ask me the pain questions, but are, are this, is this what you're looking for? And, of course, if you phrase it well, it will be. Mm -hmm. Is there some way to overcome a negative first impression? Or are, you, are they just lost? You come in, you screwed it up. And they click away, and that's that's I just think it. people I think people who are really persistent and who will who will look around, mm -hmm. you know, yes, you can overcome. I would think you can overcome a negative first impression if you have a tremendous opt-in. You're giving an amazing free video or something okay. that they want. Sure. And you're giving something about them. Mm -hmm. Twenty, you know, again, seven things you didn't know, or <laughs> something terribly provocative. But you're giving you're giving away very valuable free content. Mm -hmm. You're giving it in all three ways that they want. You're giving it sight, hearing, and reading, so they have a choice and they feel served. Mm -hmm. And you're appealing to the, the different types of personalities. They're rationally expressive. There are four different types of personalities. The dominants want just the facts. The expressive wants to be emotionally connected to. The uh, connected people want to relate to you, and rational people want research and, and backup. Right. So you're serving all four people. Okay. Makes sense. Cool. Yeah. Okay. And last question of the day. Yeah. And this one, I always try to throw in something like this at the end. It's really mm -hmm. nice to pull all the pieces together and mm -hmm. bring us back to the purpose of the Web Genius Summit. I like to end with what our listeners can do right now. They've perhaps taken notes. Maybe, like me, their mind got going on thinking about what they could do. Um, maybe they felt a little overwhelmed, but they want to do something right now, something that's going to pay off for them. What's one thing that they can focus on still today mm -hmm. that's going to help them make their business more profitable? Okay. What are you really selling? Are you selling money, love, or health? What is your best success story? How can you take your best success stories and how can you dollarize and quantify them? How can you put numbers to them? So that when you tell me, I instantly get it. There's no disconnect. I get it in a nanosecond what you can do. And how can you put those prominently in your site and in your conversation? Mm -hmm. What unhearable words are you using? And, and everybody is. So what are you using that you can scrap? <laughs> okay. Yeah. What trigger words can you use to arouse curiosity? How can you arouse curiosity in people? How can you arouse anticipation? It's not... It isn't necessary to completely satisfy, in person, it's not necessary to completely satisfy someone's need for information because they will walk away satisfied and not may not call you. Mm -hmm. On a website, how can you give them very valuable information and intimate that this is just the appetizer? Sure. So, you, yeah. you know, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but Got to get them to take some kind of action. You have to get them to take some kind of action, yes, and make it extraordinarily valuable. And again, it's really, it's really the same thing in person. How can you show or intimate that there is a lot more where that comes from and it's amazing and if this is free my god what the rest of the stuff like do you know mm -hmm. what I mean <laughs> what else yeah, do you have exactly. to offer that's great if this is what you're giving me my lord what do you what else do you have to offer uh -huh. 
And people are sometimes afraid to give away their best stuff. I think you should give away phenomenal information, and I think it serves you very well. Sure. Good. So that's what I would ask people. Yeah. Excellent. That's some yeah. good stuff. Okay. Good stuff. And we're going to have to end it here. We're, we're past the end of the hour. Okay. Thank everybody for listening. Anne, it was awesome having you on the line with us today. I thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedule to be with us. And certainly best wishes to you for your class. And thank you. And it, it sounds like it's a really exciting thing. Thank you, Jeff. It was wonderful. Thanks Great. so much. All right. Okay. Thank you, and goodbye, everyone.